With the discussion surrounding Web 3.0 gaining traction in the current web scenario, many people are confused about what it is and how it compares to previous versions of the web. Since its inception in 1980, the internet, also known as the web, has undergone numerous transformations. The read-only web, also known as Web 1, was invented and evolved between 1989 and 2005. With it as a foundation, social media and collaboration between creators and users emerged around 1999, resulting in Web 2.0, or the web, as we know it today. Since 2006, new technologies have dominated the web world, giving rise to a unique and somewhat loosely defined Web 3.0, which is touted as the web's future. Stick to the video to learn about each type of web, their strengths and weaknesses, and how they compare. Let's start with Web 1. Web 1.0 is all about reading and finding information in layman's terms. Tim Berners-Lee created the first version of the internet, Web 1.0, in 1989. Tim devised a simple project that allows one page in a directory to refer to other pages in the same system via hyperlinks. The concept gained traction and spawned a flood of new browsers, protocols, and technologies, ushering in an era of information sharing. Web 1.0 is the internet generation that existed between 91 and 2005. It was a time when most people were data consumers rather than content creators. Users could view the content on websites but could not collaborate, provide feedback, or add their content to these websites. Web 1.0 used static HTML and displayed content through tables and frames. Websites were mostly static and data was primarily stored in file systems. Web 1.0 can be imagined as a massive digital encyclopedia devoid of interactivity. While it had many advantages, it also had some drawbacks that contributed to the evolution of Web 2.0. Let's take a look at the strengths of Web 1.0. Web 1.0 marked the beginning of the World Wide Web, WWW, and the web as we know it today was built on top of it. Because Web 1.0 only allowed one person to add content, no one else could. As a result, Web 1 did not permit malicious content to be uploaded without the creator's permission. Now let's take a look at its weaknesses. Web 1.0 was a one-way communication technology that allowed only one-way communication from the creator to the user. Web 1.0 was merely an information portal with no user interaction or participation. Now let's move on to Web 2.0. Web 2.0 arose as a result of Web 1.0's limitation on communication between content creators and users. Web 2.0 is also referred to as the Read, Write, and Social Web. It began with the introduction of social media networking websites such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, but has since grown to provide users with a much richer experience. The internet as we know it is currently in the Web 2.0 phase and is gradually transitioning to Web 3.0. Users can provide feedback to content producers and create their content on Web 2 websites. Users can control the data they see on Web 2.0 websites and provide data and feedback. Web 2.0 also saw the rise of software as a service solutions and the adoption of technologies such as HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript frameworks. Web 2.0 introduced the concept of blogging, zooming, scrolling, and manipulating content, such as in Google Maps, in place of static websites that pushed content. Web 2.0 became even more popular in the early 2000s, altering the appearance of the web. Let's take a look at the strengths of Web 2.0. It offers unrestricted information searching and sorting. It uses developed APIs that users can use. It offers content that changes, it has increased social use of the content, allowing people to participate in discussions, to share data with friends and family, and communicate with people worldwide. You can easily share information. You have access to a wide range of information with a single click. Web 2.0 also has its fair share of weaknesses. There is a risk of viruses, fraud, and spam attacks. There is a risk of receiving incorrect information because the variety, veracity, and volume of information are vast. It offers inadequate security because Web 2 users rely on big tech companies. Alphabet, Google, Amazon, Meta, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft to store almost all their data. At Web 2.0, there's information censorship by big tech companies which can censor the information that users are attempting to access. It offers economic benefits limited to big tech companies despite users primarily generating the content introduced in the WWW. It is a centralized financial system in which the financial system is managed centrally by a few central banks and financial institutions that have access to user data. Finally, what is Web 3.0? Web 2.0's reliance on big tech companies is unacceptable to general users and is thus revolutionizing how people use the web. This is ushering in a new era of WWW known as Web 3.0. The Read Write Execute Web also known as Web 3.0, introduces the concepts of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and blockchain systems. 
In everything it does, Web 3.0 introduces the concept of decentralization. It is believed that content and data should be owned and controlled by decentralized autonomous bodies, reducing censorship and centralized control by big tech companies. Payments in Web 3.0 use token-based authentication, which eliminates the need for personal data to be shared with third-party intermediaries. Once deployed, smart contracts execute precisely as written, with no need for an intermediary. Cryptocurrencies and tokens are changing finance and money, and how creators can form internet-native organizations to create and share value. Let's take a look at the pillars of Web 3.0. Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Web 3.0 is built on natural language processing NLP, which allows the web to analyze and interpret spoken and written words. NLP is used for spell check, spam filtering, and autocomplete. Decentralization and Blockchain Blockchain technology is a chain of blocks that each contains an irreplaceable cryptographic hash, timestamp, and transaction data from the previous block. Web 3.0 is distinguished by the use of this technology dispersed across decentralized entities that operate on peer-to-peer -peer P2P protocols. Ubiquity Because of decentralized servers, Web 3.0 envisions systems being available anywhere and everywhere, reducing the reliance on big tech that existed with Web 2.0. 3D Graphics and Spatial Web Web 3.0 can also transition from 2D to 3D systems, which will be combined with NLP and machine learning. Sensors, smart glasses, and AR VR technologies will be used to merge reality and virtual worlds in Web 3.0. On to the strengths of Web 3.0. Web 3.0 makes data interoperable across platforms and IoT devices so that information can be accessed from all points on the web. With the help of Web 3.0, you can utilize permissionless blockchains, which reduces limitations imposed by wealth, geographic location, gender, or other demographics. Web 3.0 removes the centralized authority, resulting in self-government and distributed ownership. It offers increased security due to blockchain technology distribution and decentralization. Web 3.0 has less reliance on big tech companies. When making payments, you do not need to share personal information with third parties. Unfortunately, Web 3.0 also has a few weaknesses. The Web 3.0 is a future technology and not all gadgets will be able to use it. It may be difficult for newcomers to understand. The security and ownership are decentralized, so you have to make extensive legal changes. Web 3.0 regulation will be more difficult without big tech companies or central entities. As Web 3.0 is a neural network, it is easier to access personal and political data. Let's sum it all up by going through the differences between Web 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 in a nutshell. Using the film industry as a point of comparison, if Web 2.0 were the black and white film era, Web 2.0 would be the age of color in basic 3D, and Web 3.0 would be immersive experiences in the metaverse. In the same way that the 2010s were the decade in which Web 2.0 became the preeminent force in the global economic and cultural environment, the 2020s may be the decade in which Web 3.0 takes its rightful place as the dominant force. On October 28, 2021, the Facebook name changed to Meta, which has the potential to serve as an early indicator that the transition to Web 3.0 is gaining momentum. Text and graphics were mainly responsible for defining the Web 1.0 era. Pages on Web 1.0 rarely had a lot of visual embellishments or interactions. The introduction of Web 2.0 brought about these changes by making websites more interactive. It was essentially determined by the extent to which users may engage with a site's content and with other users. The addition of code to websites became much simpler thanks to APIs. Web 3.0 put most site material into enormous parallel databases. Artificial intelligence, AI, and semantic technologies provide computers more flexibility in dealing with data. Because of this, it is now much simpler for systems to employ 3D methods to link web-based implementations with those based on the metaverse. And this sums it all up. Web 1.0 was merely a read-only web with a one-way flow of information. The arrival of Web 2.0 saw increased social collaboration between content creators and users. Web 2.0 has seen the rise of an unprecedented number of content creators, with the volume, variety, and velocity of Web 2.0 data so high and control of this data centralized to big tech, distinguishing actual data from sponsored and censored data is nearly impossible. Concerned about centralized finances, reliance on big tech and the need to share personal information with intermediaries have spawned a wave of new technologies and thinking, steering the world toward the arrival of Web 3.0 technology. The evolution of the World Wide Web has been sufficiently gradual to reflect the benefits of independence and freedom for humankind. It is not anticipated that the transition to Web 3.0 will take place overnight. Nonetheless, it is expected that it will occur quickly enough for humans to adapt to its world readily. Increased privacy, unity, and voluntary surrender of authority in a digital environment are some of the benefits that will result from the widespread adoption of this technology, which will also destabilize the hierarchical structure upon which modern civilization is based. Thanks for watching this video. Comment to us below how you like this video.